I represent the Museum of Modern Art, which is an educational institution. That's the mission. We need to educate people about art, about design, about all the different facets of the visual creativity, but because we believe that art is substantial to real life. So what about sustainability? We need to inspire, sometimes in conceptual and indirect way, a desire for people to take more responsibility also when it comes to sustainability. So today I'm going to tell you a little more about what MoMA does in terms of sustainability, not talking about our internal programs for recycling and saving water and saving electricity. We're all chipping in as we should. But rather by talking to you about one of our proudest recent acquisitions, which is the at sign. So it was really a wonderful way, and we hope it will be in the future, to show what we mean by truly sustainable design. The at sign it was born in the Middle Ages. Believe it or not, you can first find them in manuscripts by monks that used to make a ligature of the Latin preposition ad, AD, which means two words in relationship with, to save time, you know, they were always very economical, the monks, they would go and have a curl on top of the A that signified the D. Ever since, it remained used throughout history. You can find traces in Portuguese and Venetian trade in the 16th and 17th century. Once again, it was used to, con to connect price and quantity at the rate of, there was always this sense of connection. At the end of the 19th century, you could find it also on American typewriters. The Underwood had the at sign. It was always there, kind of underutilized, mostly understood and employed by accountants and people in the commercial arts, let's, let's call them, once again to talk about at the rate of. And it so happened that in 1971, as you all know, the internet was being formed by a consortium of companies that were working for DARPA, for the uh, United States government agency. At that time, the internet was code, 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 lines of code. So in order to communicate with each other, in order to search, one needed to be almost a programmer, right? And at the beginning, the email system could be used also only within the same machine and then machines that were connected physically. It was really interesting to see the whole evolution. But so it goes that one day, Ray Tomlinson is sitting in front of a teletype machine, and he's thinking, I need a ligature. I have the name of the person here, the name of the machine here, and then I have all these lines of code that are always repeated the same way. I need to find a way to crush them all in one symbol. He looks at his keyboard, sees this strange, curly, beautiful sign, because you know what, it's also aesthetically compelling, does a little research, realizes that it's the, the only preposition on the keyboard, that it's not very well used, that it means in connection with, and he adopts the at sign so that it becomes, now it's part of our identity, a ligature then, a ligature in the Middle Ages, a ligature today, and all of a sudden, we're all using it. So this is to us a great example of design that makes one leap forward. It is also very economical. Nobody had to redo the keyboards. It was already there. So there was no need to actually start a brand new system. It keeps up with tradition. There's nothing more beautiful than being able to do something that is exquisitely contemporary, very useful, very functional, and yet can arc back centuries and centuries. It is an example of reuse. You know, we all are thinking that we need to reuse. There you go, Middle Ages today, we reuse it. We give it a new life. And last detail that I find fantastic, it is in the public domain. There was no need to pay anything or to ask anybody's permission to add the ad sign to the collection. There was no need to take it away from anybody. It belongs to all of us. And what I always say is that it's as if a butterfly were flying and I took the shadow cast by the butterfly on the wall and just kept it on the wall. It's almost as if I were taking one representation of something that belongs to everybody, an impossible acquisition, and decided instead to acquire it. Truth is, says who? That in order to educate people, you need to possess all these objects. Possession is a very passé concept. You of all people know how much more important it is to share, to use when needed, to make sure that there's not an overabundance of stuff 
but only what's needed is there. And we hope that it's going to free up curators all over the world to look at acquisitions, impossible acquisitions, as a need not to possess, but just to show. Of course, there need to be rules. Impossible acquisitions have to truly be impossible. It cannot be a matter of money. That's not fair. Like, if you want to acquire something and it costs too much money, but you could have it, then, you know, it's not a fair game to play to just tag it. But if it really cannot be had, go ahead.